Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. In this particular video, we're going to solve this three variable linear system. So if you notice here, we're dealing with three variables, X, Y, and Z. And of course, we want to solve for this. And again, this is a, what we call a linear system. Now, most of you out there that are taking like algebra one, you've been probably dealing with two variable linear systems. And it goes without saying that you need to, uh, you need to know how to solve those two variable linear systems before you take on a problem like this. But if you understand how to solve two variable linear systems, then you should be able to do this problem uh, without too much difficulty. Of course, I'm going to explain everything, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then obviously I'm going to explain exactly how to solve this problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description of the video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what are we dealing with here? Well, again, we're talking about a system. And before I show you the solution, uh, when you're dealing with two variable linear systems, let's suppose you have a system that was just 2x plus y and x plus y equals some number. For those of you out there that are taking algebra, you need to understand that what a two variable linear system represents is effectively two lines that cross like so. And if that solution has a, or if that system, excuse me, has a solution, that solution represents the point of intersection between those two lines. So but here we're dealing with three variables. So what does that solution represent? Well, three variable linear system, we're talking about planes, okay? So I'm trying to use my little art uh, skills here, but this is kind of like, you know, think of it like a little piece of paper slicing through another piece of paper. And of course we would have another uh, piece of paper. So we're looking for uh, the intersection of that plane. It conceptually, it's a little bit more, um, I would say difficult to imagine. But uh, anyways, that is what the solution to a three variable linear system represents. It's what we call an ordered triple. And let's go ahead and see that answer right now. Okay, so here it is, uh, six, two, one, where X is six, Y is two, and Z is one. This would be our ordered triple solution for this three variable linear system. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, and you're like, this was an easy problem. Well, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you totally got this three variable uh, linear system correct. Matter of fact, you're probably gonna tell them it wasn't even that difficult of a problem and they're gonna be like, wow, super impressed with that information. But uh, for those of you out there that are like, boy, this is, you know, not, you know, I'm confused. Well, let's go ahead and unconfuse you right now. So before, again, we take on this problem, there's a couple uh, basic prerequisites that you need to know. So the first is you need to know how to solve two variable systems. Okay, two variable systems. So what am I talking about? Again, things like this, 3x minus y is equal to let's say five and X plus two uh, Y is equal to one. So something like this. Now, when do you start studying um, systems? Well, this is a huge topic in algebra and uh, you even start looking at this in pre-algebra in case you absolutely need to understand how to solve two variable linear systems before you take on this problem. So if you're confused about any of this stuff, a couple of quick rec uh, recommendations. One, you can check out additional videos on my YouTube channel on systems or uh, take a look at either one of my, um, any one of my algebra courses for two variable linear system help. So like pre-algebra, but if you really wanna get into two variable systems, algebra one, algebra two. Now, for those of you out there that do need help with three variable uh, systems, linear and non-linear, you're gonna wanna check out my pre-calculus course for that. Anyways, you need to be able to solve a system like this and what are some techniques that we use to solve a two variable linear system? So a couple quick techniques that you should know. Okay, one is the graphing method. So hopefully you're, uh, you're familiar with that, but this is really not our practical method. The graphing method effectively means graph this line and graph this line. And if they cross, just look at the point of intersection. That is effectively 
the visual or the graphical um, interpretation of the solution of the system. But we really don't uh, use that in, a, in terms of a practical um, tool to solve systems. We want to use algebra. So we're talking really about the substitution method and the elimination or a linear combination method. Okay, so these are the, going to be the primary methods that you're going to want to use to solve a two-variable linear system. Now, as you progress in mathematics, there's other types of systems, really, I mean, other type of tools to solve systems that involve matrices, and it's really a huge topic. But uh, anyways, at a minimum, you need to be able to understand these two methods right here, the substitution method and or the elimination linear combination method, because I'm going to be using uh, these techniques as we get into this problem. Okay, so again, I'm going to assume that you understand uh, a problem like this, and now I'm going to get into solving this problem. Okay, so here we go. We have x, y, and x, y, and z. We want to solve for these variables x, y, and z. So what is a kind of basic game plan? Well, let me kind of explain it, explain this to you right now. So when you're solving a three-variable linear system, okay, the first thing you want to do is we want to eliminate one variable, and it's the same variable in two of the equations, all right? So uh, what does that exactly mean? Well, I'm going to kind of show you exactly what that means. But basically, here we have x, y, and z. We want to get rid of, we want to create a system where we eliminate one of the variables. So we're uh, left with two equations with only two variables, okay? And you'll better see what I'm talking about here in a second. So once we've done this, okay, uh, once we eliminated one variable, uh, that same variable in two equations, we're basically gonna be uh, creating a two variable linear system. Then we're gonna solve that two variable system and then once we solve this system, we'll use those solutions to solve for that last remaining variable. So here you have two variables, and then this will be our last variable. And uh, again, we will have solved for three variables. So let me go ahead and show you exactly how uh, easy this is. Now, there is a lot of algebra involved, but don't let that intimidate you. Just really what you need to do is just work this problem step by step. And uh, in terms of three variable uh, systems, linear systems, this is actually a pretty easy problem because right here we have x minus 3y is equal to 0. I can easily uh, rewrite this this way. x is equal to 3y. I'm just going to simply move that 3y to the other side. Now I can use this equation, x is equal to 3y, uh, to substitute in to these two equations. I can eliminate one of the variables. Okay, now what variable am I going to eliminate? I'm going to actually eliminate the x in these two equations. Okay, now how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to replace this, these x's right here, because x is equal to 3y. I'm simply going to replace these two x's with 3y, and then we'll have two equations with just y and z, okay, with just two variables. So again, the game plan is this. We have x is equal to 3y, We'll replace these two x's with 3y because x is equal to 3y. And then we'll have two, uh, two equations in two variables, and then we'll be able to solve that system. Now, if you were kind of unsure on how to get this problem started, you should try to pause the video and do the rest of this problem on your own. If you're like, oh, okay, now I know what to do. Anytime you think you know what to do, you should pause the video and try to work out the, uh, you know, the rest of the problem uh, on your own, just to make sure you, you know, you truly have the skills that you think you might already have. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So x is equal x is equal to three y. We're going to replace this x and this x and this uh, two equations here uh, with that three y. And let's go ahead and see that right now. So we have two times three y plus y plus three z's uh, three z is equal to seventeen. And then this x is 3y plus 2y minus 4z is equal to 6. Again, all I'm doing is replacing these x's here with 3y. And this is the result right here. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this up. So 2 times 3y will be 6y plus y plus 3z is equal to 17. And this will be 3y plus 2y minus 4z is equal to 6. And we can see that right here. 3y plus 2y minus 4z is equal to 6. So now we have uh, two equations in two variables only, y and z. Okay, so uh, basically, 
Uh, a three variable linear systems are typically taught like an algebra two pre-calculus for sure. But uh, now what we've done is uh, kind of distilled this problem down into like an algebra one problem. So again, this is something that you should be able to handle, but let's go ahead and clean this, uh, clean this equation, these equations up and solve for y and z. All right, so we have 6y plus uh, y plus 3z. So we'll combine like terms here, 6y and y. That'll give us 7y plus 3z, 3z is equal to 17. And then 3y and 2y, that's, of course, 5y minus 4z is equal to 6. All right, so at this stage right here, there's a lot of different ways you can approach this system. And so, again, algebraically speaking, you can either use the substitution method and or the linear combination uh, method, elimination linear combination method. Hopefully, again, you are familiar with uh, those methods. So, but either one will work. Okay, if you like to use the substitution method, go ahead and do that. But the name of the game, though, is uh, finding, um, uh, solving for both Y and Z. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use the elimination combination method. And I'm kind of uh, looking at the Z variables here, okay? So we need to eliminate one of the variables. So I'm thinking, you know, we can eliminate this Z. So I can take this 4. I could take a 4 and multiply it by this equation, okay, right here. This entire equation, you're allowed to do this. Uh, you can um, remember in algebra, you can solve, you can multiply anything you want. You can multiply an equation by any number as long as you multiply each term of the equation. Okay. But why am I doing this? Well, I want to get this to be a 12, a positive 12 Z. And down here, if I can get this to be a negative 12 Z, well, then when I add these down, the, uh, those Z uh, terms will go away. Okay. So again, we're talking about uh, the elimination method. If you're like totally lost at this point, it's, uh, you know, that's a strong indication that you need to review basic linear systems, two variable linear systems. But anyways, I'm going to take this four, I'm going to multiply each of these terms here. And then to get this to be a negative 12z, I need to multiply it by three. So we're going to multiply everything by three. And let's go ahead and see the results of doing that. So four times seven y, that's 28y, four times that positive three z, 12z, four times 17 is 68. And then 3 times 5y gives us that 15y, 3 times this negative 4z, negative 12z, and then 3 times 6 is 18. Okay, so we're getting there. Now, what do we do at this stage? Well, what we're, what we're going to do is we can combine this. So, again, this method I'm talking about is what we call the elimination or linear combination method. So you can... Uh, another thing you could do with systems in an algebra is you can actually combine two equations in, and it can create a new equation, all right? And that equation is perfectly fine as well. So again, if you don't know what I'm doing, you need to look at the elimination combination method. All right, so 28y plus 15y, we're adding down. That's going to be 43y. But look here, I have 12z, positive 12z plus a negative 12z. When I add down, I get zero. That's what I wanted, right? I want to eliminate this variable. So I'm only left with Y and the numbers, right? So 68 plus 18 is 86. Now I'm just left with this equation, 43Y is equal to 86. So let's go ahead and solve that nice, simple one-step equation. So all we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 43. So 86 divided by 3 is 2. So Y is equal to 2. Okay, so watch how easy this becomes. Once you were able to solve from one uh, variable, we can easily get the rest of the answers in this system. All right, so we know now that y is equal to 2. Remember this equation from the beginning of the problem? I said x is equal to 3y. Well, to get x, if I know what y is equal to, y is equal to 2, all we have to do is replace this y with 2. So 3 times y or 3 times 2 is going to be x. So x is going to be equal to 3 times 2, which, of course, is 6. All right, so we're really moving now. So we got x is equal to 6, y is equal to 2. So we need to get z. So how do we get that last variable c? Well, as I indicated in my little kind of uh, preview or my steps to this problem, once you have these two uh, solutions, you just go ahead and use those. And any one of the equations that um, we had in our original problem, that has both x, y, and z. Okay, so I can use this equation or this equation 
to um, plug in for X and Y so I can solve for Z. So I can plug in my values here for X and Y and solve for Z, or I could plug them in right here, X and Y and solve for Z. I'm gonna go ahead and use this equation because I just think the number's a little bit easier to deal with, but you can um, easily plug in for X and Y because we know what X and Y is, and then we'll solve for that last remaining variable, Z. Okay, so let's go and do that right now. So X is equal to six, Y is equal to two. So we'll use this equation right here. So X is six, we'll plug in a six right there. Two times Y, Y is two. So that's gonna be two times two minus four Z is equal to six. So that's what we're solving for. We're solving for that last variable Z. So this gives us six plus two times two is four minus four Z, uh, four Z is equal to six. This is 10 minus four Z is equal to six. Now I'm gonna subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. Got to be very careful here with your algebra, right? So here we have 6 plus negative 10. It's going to be a negative 4. So this is negative 4z is equal to negative 4. So when I divide both sides of the equation by negative 4, we get z is equal to positive 1. Okay, so there is our answer. X is, x is equal to 6. Y is equal to 2. And z is equal to 1. And again, you always want to express your solutions as an ordered triple, x, y, z. So we would write it this way, uh, x being first, 6, y is 2, and then z is 1. And there you go. That is the solution to this three-variable system. And in terms of uh, difficulty for three-variable systems, I would say this is like a medium to like an easy type of problem. So if you're saying, oh my goodness, they become, there's, there, it's more difficult than this. Yeah, I mean, definitely these the numbers, you know, worked out nice and easy. But, you know, my goal here is just to kind of introduce you to the basic, um, basic procedure to solve a three variable linear system. Okay, of course, there's a lot of other problems that could take much more time. Again, if you need help specifically with three variable linear systems, check out my pre-calculus course. But if uh, you're really kind of just studying right now, two variable systems in uh, my pre-algebra, algebra one or algebra two course will do just fine. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.